Hi, so in this video we are going to discuss about cerebellum of which we will be discussing the frequently asked questions. So the usually in the university exam they have asked to draw the functional divisions of the cerebellum, describe the connections and describe the functions of cerebellum. So we see each one by one. So the functional divisions of cerebellum, functionally the cerebellum is divided into three major divisions which is the spinocerebellum, cerebrocerebellum and vestibular cerebellum. So in this, the vermis and the paravermal region together is called the spinocerebellum. So why is it called spinocerebellum? That is because this region receives inputs from the spinal cord. So that is why it is called the spinocerebellum. And then we've got the cerebral, cerebellar hemispheres which is called the cerebrocerebellum. Now this region is mainly involved in impulses from receives impulses from the cortex so that is why it is called cerebrocerebellum and finally we've got a floccular nodular lobe which is uh, involved in which uh, receives information from and to the vestibular nuclei and that is why it is called the vestibulocerebellum right now let us just see the functions one by one so as i said the spinocerebellum receives information from the spinal cord and then it uh, gives off its of information to the medial descending system and the lateral descending system so it is mainly involved in motor execution right now the cerebrocerebellum receives information from the cortex and also it gives off information to the motor and the premotor cortices that is why we say it is involved in motor planning right and the vestibular cerebellum they mainly uh, give off their information to the vestibular nuclei so that is why we say it is involved in the balance and eye movement. Okay. So that is roughly the functional divisions and the major functions of each of these functional divisions. Now let us see the connections of cerebellum. So first we will see the afferent connections. So all the connections to the cerebellum and from the cerebellum they mainly are through these three peduncles which are the superior, middle and inferior cerebellar peduncle. Okay, so this is the superior cerebellar peduncle, middle cerebellar peduncle and inferior cerebellar peduncle. So all the inputs as well as outputs are through these three peduncles, right? So as I said, we've got the spinocerebellum which receives information from the spinal cord. So the two major tracks from the spinal cord that reach the cerebellum are the dorsal spinocerebellar and the ventral spinocerebellar. Okay, so from the spinal cord, we've got dorsal spinocerebellar and ventral spinocerebellar. Now, from the pons, we've got the pontocerebellar. Okay, so here you can see that the pontocerebellar is the only tract that enters through the middle cerebellar peduncle. Now, from the midbrain, and uh, we've got the vestibular cerebellar tract which receives information from the vestibular nuclei. Then, from the inferior olivary nucleus, we've got olivocerebellar, and from the cuneate nucleus, we've got cuneocerebellar. And from the tectocerebellar, see tectum receives information both from the superior colliculus and inferior colliculus. So they have information both about the auditory as well as the visual impulses. So the tectocerebellar also enters the cerebellum through the superior cerebellar peduncle. So these are the major afferent connections to the cerebellum and each have got their own functions. So the afferent connections are dorsal spinocerebellar and ventral spinocerebellar from the spinal cord. Then vestibulocerebellar, olivocerebellar, cuneocerebellar, tectocerebellar and from the pons we have got the pontocerebellar tract. So you can, when connections are asked, you can elaborate on each tract and mention one or two functions of each. Right? Next, we have got to see the efferent connections. So the efferent connections of the cerebellum are mainly from the deep cerebellar nuclei. See, we know that in the cerebellum we have got deep cerebellar nuclei. So in the vermis region we have got the vestigial nucleus. In the paravermal region, we've got the globus and emboliform, which are together called the nucleus interpositus. And in the cerebrocerebellum, we've got the dentate nucleus. So the major output of the cerebellum is via these cere deep cerebellar nuclei. So we will see each one by one. So again, if this is a cerebellum, you can show the nuclei here. This is a vestigial nucleus and this is the dentate nucleus. So from the dentate nucleus, we've got the output fibers which pass through the red nucleus and then to the thalamus and to the cortex. So that tract is called the dentato rubro thalamocortical tract. Okay. 
and also it can directly project on to the thalamus and that is called the cerebellothalamocortical tract so we've got two tracts from the dentate nucleus which is the dentate rubrothalamocortical tract and the cerebellothalamocortical tract and from the vestigial nucleus we've got the vestigio reticular tract which in turn is going to influence our reticulospinal tracts okay so from the nucleus interposters also uh, it it gives off efference to the red nucleus and thereby influence the reticulospinal tract so in general the most important ones are from the dentate nucleus because it's give, giving off two major tracts which are the dentate rubrothalamocortical tract and the cerebellothalamocortical tract and from the vestigial nucleus we have vestigio reticular tract these are the most important output tracts so in when you are asked to write different connections you can write it as output from the spinocerebellum see we know that the vestigial nucleus and the interposters is from the spinocerebellum so the output is from these nucleus to the reticular spinal and the uh, to the red nucleus now from the cerebrocerebellum we've got this uh, two tracts which are the cerebellothalamocortical tract and the dentato rubrothalamocortical tract which is involved in motor planning and from the vestibular cerebellum we've got the it, it it gives off its impulses directly to the vestibular nuclei so it is involved in uh, the vestibular spinal tract it influences the vestibular spinal tract so these are the different connections next we'll see the functions of cerebellum so when you write the functions of cerebellum it is always good to write part by part that means by each functional division so first of all the spinal cerebellum we said it is the vermis and the paravermal region right its main function is smoothening and coordination of movement so how is it able to smoothen and coordinate movement see this the spinal cerebellum as i said it receives information from the spinal cord right and it also receives a motor plan from the cerebral cortex so they will compare both and they will be able to uh, have an error detection if a movement is carried out and because of this function it is able to smoothen and coordinate the movement it can also control the posture because see the vermal region is mainly having its output to the medial descending system which is involved in posture so there uh, the spinal cerebellum can control the posture and it can also control skilled voluntary movements why because the paravermal region mainly supply mainly gives output to the lateral descending system which is uh, involved in fine distal movements so thus the spinal cerebellum can control skilled voluntary movements and also it can control tone and stretch reflexes via these medial descending systems so these are the functions of the spinal cerebellum next cerebro cerebellum we said it's got it receives and gives output to the cortex so that is why it is involved in planning and programming of movements it also controls the movements of one side of the body and it's also helpful in learning and improvement of motor skills okay next for vestibular cerebellum it's got control of posture balance and equilibrium it's also involved in eyeball movement and also vestibular functions so because its main functions are to the vestibular nuclei it is involved in posture balance and equilibrium as well as eye movements right so these are the functions of the cerebellum you can write it as each division so when questions on cerebellum are asked you can also write some additional scoring points like the applied aspects so what happens when there is a damage to cerebellum so you know it includes hypotonia ataxia and intention tremor so you can just mention these for a completion sake so to summarize we have mentioned about the functional divisions of the cerebellum we have seen the afferent connections as well as efferent connections and we have mentioned about the deep cerebellar nuclei and also we have seen the functions of the cerebellum so i hope the concept is clear and you know what right when a question like this is asked for the exam thank you